The political history of Uganda is a history characterized by those who are thirsty and hungry for power. First, Obote had turned against his president, had him exiled and declared himself president of Uganda. On 25th of January 1971, while on state duties to Singapore for Commonwealth meeting, his peg boy Idi Amin Dada overthrew him in a coup. His troops sealed off Entebbe International Airport and took over Kampala. He immediately went on air on Radio Uganda and accused his former boss, Obote, of corruption and preferential treatment. Dr. Obote will come back to Uganda as a citizen of Uganda but not as a president of the Republic of Uganda. Amin seems to have been unprepared for the job of presidency but had to topple Obote, having learned that there were plans to have him arrested for misappropriating army funds. And when the mission was possible, he played that the military government would remain only as a caretaker regime until new elections. I am not ambitious of standing for power, but uh, my job is that uh, I want to hand over the government clean to the, somebody who is coming into power, hold these corruptions, and then when he comes, he will have a... Uh, a good um, he will he will know everything even I will brief him clearly this is what we have got with a commission of inquiry report and uh, how much he has got to hand clean uh, government to him and that's what I, I, I want and then I can go back to barracks and uh, you will be surprised to see that I am first uh, uh, African uh, who is not ambitious to hand over power to person and then take again order from him. If I am still all right here, you come back, you will see that you come back when the uh, next man into power here, you will see me I'm coming, saluting him and obey his order. People were prepared to give him the benefit of the doubt at that time. Many religious leaders and influential people, very people, permanent secretaries were made ministers which made it possible for people to believe that indeed this was a temporary arrangement because permanent secretaries were, were, not, necessarily, uh, were not necessary to be ministers. In order to take absolute rule to himself, his first task was to ban the activities of the Legislative Assembly. He and his generals then occupied the parliamentary building. The building constructed in 1956 had little activity during Amin's reign compared to what it is today. Upon the successful coup in 1971, the legislation that used to take place over here in parliament was banned by President Idi Amin. Amin and his general took over parliament and occupied all the chambers. The parliament was the most protected and guided government installation. Why? Because President Idi Amin himself had an office in Parliament. He passed on the role of policy making to the Army Council which occupied the parliamentary chambers as he occupied the President's office in the same building. He was mad with power. He was mad of limited intellectual capacity and therefore he believed that he was a God sent gift to Africa. Indeed, he aspired to being the King of Africa. He didn't have that much power himself. Bob also says, until the colonels, until his colonels spoke, uh, he wouldn't do much. As time went on, power became sweet. President Amin did not walk the talk. No power was handed over, but the army council took on the administrative role in Uganda. The council composed of senior army officials who would sit and agree on policies to rule the country. It is these policies that would be passed on to Amin to append his signature and approved it as a decree. 
and the army will say we want this, we want that, we want that. Then they will draft that one into a law, and then I mean we'll sign. The laws that were passed were not debated. They are decrees by the president then, head of the army. There are no discussion of them except within his own dis uh, decided forum. Among the decrees approved by Amin was a decree on wigs 1974. Women wearing wigs, trousers, mini skirts and long skirts with a deep slit was outlawed. On the same day, clerks were only persons authorized to register customary marriage and not sub-county chiefs. A decree number 11 of 1971, Amin prohibited three or more persons traveling together at night while carrying offensive weapons. The decree on the jobless, the law dealt with the vagrants, literary refiners abayaye, able-bodied persons between 16 to 40 years who are jobless, they would forcefully work in community farms. The decree on hoarding to cause artificial scarcity was illegal and punishable. These decrees were just a continuation of the already existing colonial laws and other laws made during Opote One government. One thing I must commend Amin, he was a nationalist in terms of at that time there was no corruption. He was not corrupt himself and he could not stand any corruption by anybody. Richard Olwain, NBS, live at nine.